without saying the less people have to touch on the thing is the better. Uh, if, if they can actually just take it out of the box like you do with uh, any other piece of networking equipment you do now and plug it in and it works, fantastic. That's where we'd like to go. Uh, Monowall, the project we were based on, they, as a part of a diploma, but as a, like a senior thesis at school, they, uh, the main developer rewrote the entire internals of the, of the project, and now it's a very, very lightweight and modular C++ XML RPC architecture uh, that is really attractive when you're running on 200 megahertz systems and would be a huge improvement over the PHP basis that we have right now. So that's also a huge amount of work, but we could get there. Um, another thing you can do with what we have right now is with very minimal changes, you can have a gateway platform. Everything is almost configured by itself the way it is right now. So if you had a little tiny box with 500 megahertz and you slap in a PRI card or a BRI or three analog cards, um, it automatically translates those over to SIP accounts and you have a gateway appliance and you never have to touch it and you're done. That would be nice. Um, reintegration of Bonneville functionality goes without saying as that, conti as that project continues to grow and uh, add extended VPN uh, functionality and access point and radius authentication and all these different things that they have added in the meantime if we could port that back into the project, excellent. And a user portal, people are missing a user portal. Um, I'm done really early. I just noticed that. <laughs> I even have two clocks down here on my Apple, and it tells me exactly how long I've been talking and how long I have to talk. And it's... <laughs> a little... I could just start over. Uh, it's a little unbalanced. Um, well, let me pop up this slide here, that one, um, and then I'll, ask, I'll take questions. You can ask questions in English or German, and I'll uh, do my best to answer them. This is the demo system in the room. Uh, it should hand you an IP if you want to connect to it, and then go to that uh, IP address and username and password, and please be nice. Don't change my password and make me reflash the system. That would be unfriendly. So if you want to play around with that, go ahead and look. Um, and then I will take, yes, as mentioned here, I will take questions now if anybody has any. Yeah? Yep. It's uh, the operating system, the base operating system is FreeBSD. Ah, yeah. <laughs> To get everything on the on the recordings, I have to use the phone. So the question is, what kind of hardware do you support? Uh, because uh, on the one side you say it runs on BSD, on the other side you, s you say you're using a flash disk. So this means you are actually optimized for fairly small or embedded systems. Yeah, it's optimized to run on. Well, the file system you mentioned flash. It's optimized to never touch the flash. Uh, it only mounts the entire system read-write, it mounts a very tiny partition read-write, writes out the XML, closes that down, rewrites it, read-only, and never touches uh, the flashcard other than that one single write. So that's been optimized to work as an appliance. Um, of course, the entire system's been stripped down for that. It runs with a few channels, of course, depending on what you're doing, if you're transcoding, forget it, but it does run with a few channels on 200 megahertz and 64 megs of RAM. Okay, and what kind of ISDN cards, for instance, do you support? Uh, we support, uh, at, uh, not the, the best, um, most properly or the best supported cards are HFC cards, uh, um, mm -hmm. Cologne chips, yeah. because they're open and people actually have code for them and drivers for them. and. Um, that's, that's a big complaint sometimes that we don't have as much hardware support as MISDN or some of the other projects, but we can't because nobody provides the specifications to those. But hardware. if I understood you right, then the, your operating system, because that's a raw system that you're distributing, actually has to uh, recognize the, the ISDN card. And for, yeah, from my experience, FreeBSD is not very likely to be that flexible to 
support most of those HFC cards, for instance? It's, it's not by itself, but that's this branch of the ISDN stack in FreeBSD. Um, there's, I guess, some controversy and some politics about it, but it was taken out at one point, mm -hmm. and now it's been completely taken out. But this fork of it is maintained by uh, Hans-Peter Zelaski in Norway, and he does all of the work on the continued development on that. So when we build our systems, we don't leave in the obviously deprecated and old ISDN stacks. We, we throw in this new stack that he has, and it works incredibly well. Uh, there's still a few incompatibilities that we found in it, but he's really active in maintaining it too. So um, that's the only reason that FreeBSD can be so flexible and, main and, and see all those cards and be able to do something with them. Going once. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, I was wondering because uh, your basic idea was to design something really easy, right? So, did you ever think I should maybe adopt the wizard interface kind of thing, where you know you uh, you kind of, you try to not show so many big screens with so many dialog boxes, but more drop downs and ask less questions of the user? A, wi a wizard is definitely something to think about for. Um, one point something, where you can do the entire system configuration in 25 steps. Something, next, 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 okay, uh-huh, I have another SIP phone, I have another SIP phone, yeah, I'm done with those. But I don't want a wizard for my SMTP server. I don't want a wizard to set up a conference room. It's pretty straightforward. And if it can't be made straightforward, then we have to rethink it, because there has to be an easy way to define a conference room. Um, without overloading the user with options. So, but in, in the sense of uh, the entire system, in setting up an entire system, the wizard would be, would be excellent, yeah. So. Um, one last thing. Do you have some kind of watchdog thingy in there, or what's the practice? Uh, well, it, um, it does crash. The asterisk core can crash, and no, not yet. There is not a watchdog keeping the asterisk process alive, which has to be done still. But it happens so rarely, I'd rather find out about it. Um, it only happens in certain. What? That's the whole box of the whole there, I mean, there can be things done that prevents this, that, that keeps an eye on asterisk, but then the user will never know about it, and in turn, I will never know about it. So if there's something that's causing asterisk to crash, I don't want the uh, pull the plug, replug it in solution to be the answer. So. I don't know if anybody wants to see the system on here, but if you have a laptop and you're curious, you can look at it yourself instead of showing you pages and pages and pages. I'm guessing, yeah. You can spend the time yourself if you want. Um, yeah, all right. Thank you.